35 minutes later, we finally have it set up. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> All right. Well, <laughs> maybe that's why we get carded at this movie. It's hard to set up a camera. That was the first time in forever I've been carded for anything. Like Me too. At a like, movie, If you look yeah. under 25 and it's like... I look at... Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. You're my new favorite employee. <laughs> You're my favorite customer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hi, Brad. I didn't realize it was you. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I am wearing my different hoodie today. <laughs> <laughs> it's the backwards baseball cap. That's what all the young people do. Oh, yeah. It was when I stopped wearing the uh, White Castle hat because it got d dirty and messed up. <laughs> Aw. <laughs> I miss it. Well, we're here because we both saw Neighbors 1 together. <laughs> yeah, so now we get to see the sequel. Mm -hmm. um, I thought it was better than the, the first one, honestly. But it had a shaky start. It kind of did. The start when it immediately is mm -hmm. like vomit and poo jokes. I'm yeah. like, oh god, I have a bad feeling about this. And it took me a while uh -huh. to get into it. I, I mean, it's still... As soon as the girls came into it. I started getting into the movie. They were better. It was like the first one in that the frat people were funnier mm -hmm. than the, the couple. This one is so much so that I really kind of just wanted to see a movie about Chloe Moretz wanting to party and not being able to at a sorority. So she starts her own with her own friends that she makes so they can smoke weed and party. And then Zac Efron comes in to like help them start out their own sorority. And there's some really kind of funny stuff about like double standards and things like that with their back and forth with, with Zac Efron. So like that in and of itself would be like a really, really funny movie and it's the best parts of this movie and then in this just every now and then the movie neighbors keeps happening <laughs> <laughs> well it was like a nicer premise mm -hmm. with the the girls than with the guys because a it turned it on its head yeah. and b it was a more noble cause you know it was a bore it was about like you know they wanted to have friendship and they didn't want to have mm -hmm. to keep going to parties where like dudes were all over them all the time they yeah. just wanted to have something they could do as sisters uh -huh. whereas the other one was just like frat dudes gonna have a party smoke a lot of weed get a lot of pussy uh-huh and and in this like Zac Efron's arc in the movie is pretty good because he's still kind of in that phase but then when he's helping these girls out He's like, oh, wow, yeah, damn, we really did do a lot of douchey things back then. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, yeah, yeah, I see your point. Like, I, <laughs> I see your point, girls. I'm really, really sorry. Yeah, he had some good moments in it. I liked yeah. when uh, Seth Rogen teaching him how to boil an egg. <laughs> And he's, why, why would that make the eggs hard if it makes pasta soft? Ow, ow, it's hot. Like, oh, no, don't, don't touch don't it. Don't touch that. That's boiling water. And this What's is... the water doing now? No, no, it's boiling. What? That got a huge laugh out of me. Like, because <laughs> this is going on when one of the girls is just simply sneaking into their house to, to, to get their phone so they can switch out the numbers. Um... And so this is just what Seth Rogen and Zac Efron just happen to be doing in this scene. <laughs> they kind of come into this mid-conversation, and they're having this ridiculous conversation about eggs. It was the, the movie did get quite a few laughs out of me. Like in terms of comedy sequels, this is really good. Like comedies, and this is a great movie by any stretch of the imagination, but. Comedy sequels, whether it's a sequel to a good movie or a sequel to a bad movie, god damn, comedy sequels suck. They at least, they turned it on its head enough so that even though it was repeating some of the same stuff, mm -hmm. it didn't feel like it was the exact same movie. Though, mm -hmm. I mean, there the, the big problem that I had was the same problem as in the first one. A lot of this is very easily solvable. Yeah. Very easily. And it's it's enough that it it bugs me, because I'm like, you can just... Just call the police. Call the cops. Like, they're like, oh, they robbed us, but we stole their weeds, so they can't call the police. What? It's no, that, like, that's not true at all. Yeah, it's like, okay, they don't have any proof. Uh-huh. But you have proof they wrote on the wall... Yeah. ...that they stole this stuff mm -hmm. from you. You have all the proof in the world. You have the advantage over them. Yeah. You can easily solve it. And again, it's a world that does not have... 
uh, noise violations. No. <laughs> like it's, and a world where they're the only neighbors who are having a problem with this. Yeah, all the other neighbors are fine. And just don't give a they shit, don't I guess. They don't yeah. Exist. It's like there is a house that's <laughs> on the other side of them. <laughs> What about those people? Oh, those people are fine with it. <laughs> They're like, this is great. I love having these people as neighbors. <laughs> and those problems are totally still in this movie. I didn't I didn't have as much of a problem with it in this one as in the first one, only because I think I was just prepared for it a little more in mm -hmm. this. Uh, so I was like, yeah, oh, oh, okay. This, I, I guess I'm used to this universe right now. It's a really dumb, stupid universe where fucking nothing makes sense. But as, as long as it's still funny, all right, fine. And there's, it's it's hit or miss. But the, the laughs that it did get out of me were some really good laughs. The dude dressed up like a clown <laughs> just got me every single time. I liked, um... Zach Heffron, when he gets kicked out of the house, mm -hmm. he decides to go running. They're like, you going to put your shoes on? Yeah. Oh, bye, mess. And him just, like, continuing with this, but not uh -huh. acknowledging that he's just running barefoot. Like, just... Yeah. People's reactions, like, what is he doing? <laughs> Who is this guy? <laughs> just sitting in his old frat house, just contemplating things, I guess. <laughs> With a cane, like he's old because his feet <laughs> hurt because he was running all night. He's very funny in this. Like I, I I've seen him in, in a handful of comedies, and I think me and Irving are like the only two people in the universe who kind of like Dirty Grandpa. <laughs> he was funny in that too. My least favorite part of this movie is Seth Rogen and Rose Byrne. Not that they're bad in the movie, but. Everything else in the movie, I was way more invested in the story of the girls. I was way more invested in Zac Efron's story. The stuff with Rose Byrne and Seth Rogen is the stuff from the first one again. I mean, it yeah. it is. And I was... Well, they didn't I, really have an arc in this one. It was like that stuff minus the arc. Because in the last one, it was like, okay, they realized they got to cut out this kid shit yeah. their parents now. Uh -huh. And they sort of like grow up as people yeah in this one they sort of have it together already mm -hmm. so it's like mm. it's it's john mcclane in die hard 2 where in die hard 2 john mcclane and holly are back together again his life is pretty good he's like an lapd officer now like He's not like in the third one where he's hung over or the first one where they're separated and everything in die hard 2 he he, it, it, it's really probably the best John McClane's life has ever been, but the same shit happens again. So he's got that line where he says, how could the same shit happen to the same guy twice? <laughs> That's honestly kind of yeah. Seth Rogen and Rose Byrne in this movie. Yeah. And there's, and there is stuff with them that's funny. Uh, the We mentioned the part with the eggs, and there's a miscommunication that they have via texting that's, that's really funny when the girls switch out their the, numbers. The punchline to that, well, one of the punchlines where he ends up in Australia was one of the things where I'm like, it's, it's too much of a stretch and too much of like a sitcom kind of yeah. punchline where it didn't seem to fit with the rest of it, where he's like green screened in Australia. That was, what was that? And it's like, <laughs> oh, I went to Australia because mm -hmm. you said that to meet me there. And it's like, okay, so via text, mm -hmm. he decides to go to this opera house in Australia. 18 hours it's like okay <laughs> but he couldn't have looked in the next room and found her there like that was sort of like really contrived no i i, I agree that that punchline was kind of like what but the setup of it was funny and i did like i did like uh when he gets back and he makes the offhand joke that he's still on like 3 a.m australia time <laughs> <laughs> i i did like that and i um There's a, like you said at the beginning of the movie, where, like, it, it seemed like with them, whenever they were on screen, it was just kind of shticky. Mm -hmm. Whereas, like, yeah, there's shenanigans going on with the girls and Zac Efron, but they at least have arcs. With Seth Rogen and them in it, it's just the opening scene where she vomits on him to say that she's pregnant. And then 
it can't simply just be a scene where they're selling their house. It, the baby's also got to have a dildo, which that is a recurring gag in this movie, and it never worked. <laughs> it, once or twice, like when they're talking and you forget the baby's there, and then mm -hmm. they'll cut to the baby that still has the dildo. Once or twice. There was some funny gags with them. I think, like, a lot of it's just sort of line -arama and see what hits, but I think they were probably less annoying in this. A little less... There's less of a point, mm -hmm. but, like... Um, <laughs> when Seth Rogen, Rogen and Zac Efron are trapped in the garage, yeah. and they leave them a shitting bucket, yeah. <laughs> and then cut to Seth Rogen <laughs> on the shitting bucket, he's like, what are you doing? Well, I, I'm shitting, I I'm just shitting. shit when I'm nervous. I'm, I get like this when I'm nervous. Oh, yeah. it, was, it was quick, mm -hmm. and that's what made it funnier versus yeah. like just vomiting on someone and mm -hmm. like that goes on forever when she's gagging like yeah just, there's just so much like, of a setup to it and that's the opening scene that was the very first scene before even the credits have yeah. cut to them there you can hear them making sex noises like yeah. and i was like oh no this is the no. first scene oh no, this is this is going into grown-ups 2 territory where the opening scene was he gets peed on by a deer <sighs> like uh please uh, no don't there was no cgi deer so no there was yeah there wasn't that we got CGI Australia instead. I was or green I, screen. I was disappointed, but also glad. I guess with this development, when we watched the first one, we were mm -hmm. like, Zac Efron and his one of his bros. It just seemed like they should get together. Oh, Dave Franco. Yeah, yeah. Dave Franco. And then mm -hmm. like, they made Dave Franco gay in this. Yeah. And then he, <laughs> it just like he gets proposed to by his boyfriend, and mm. they get engaged. And I'm like, oh, so they did the thing that we said, except Zac Efron didn't get with him. No, I was disappointed. They broke up yeah. the dream team. Mm -hmm. But I think they probably were still implying Zac Efron was gay. He just wasn't like aware of it. It's like he, <laughs> he becomes like a gay wedding planner. He's like, all the gay guys love me. I don't know why. <laughs> He's just too unaware to be like, oh, maybe I'm gay. Years down the line, he'll end up with Chloe Murray. That's his character. <laughs> or the girl who goes flying through the windshield. <laughs> yeah. I, I laughed at them more than I thought I would. Well, I liked them more than I thought I would. Mm -hmm. um, like, <laughs> I laughed when they go to the party with the stupid uh, douchey frats, and they're like, this wasn't fun. And then they yeah. all meet each other, and they're like, yeah, the guys are wanting to have sex. Yeah, it was really rapey in there, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> like, they're kind of laughing, like, yeah. it was so rapey in there. Oh, and then towards the end, when Zach, they, uh, dude, uh, Ike, uh, God damn it, I can't remember his last name. Um, the, they're Seth Rogen's friend when he drinks the punch. Like, yeah. you never drink the punch. You never drink the punch. <laughs> and he gets roofied. And I'm like, what is happening in this party? <laughs> Some stuff is really, like, really <laughs> questionable. <Yeah. laughs> Those can't be the only two roofied cups in this party. <laughs> some, there's some, like, fucking Revenge of the Nerds shit going on in here. <laughs> this stuff is unaddressed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Good God. <laughs> the movie Higher Learning is going on upstairs. Fuck. <laughs> I did like uh, the scene where uh, um, they w the Lisa Kudrow cameo in it, where they actually address, like... How much they're saying fuck in front of the kid just doing the line rama thing, and that turns into pretty good banter. I did like when he's like, the baby won't won't remember any of this. Hey, fuck, fuck, fuck. And the kid says fuck, and this look on his face like <laughs> And then Lisa Kudrow says, Oh, what's she watching on her iPad? Good fellas. Like, oh, I'll have you know, I don't know what she's watching. So there. <laughs> they, they did have some good bits with them. Yeah. No, they're... they're, they're, they're I even laughed at some of the minion gags. I don't even care about the that minions, was but funny. I did laugh at that. That was very, very funny. Uh, they... The... <laughs> the... The people that they're initiating in the sorority, they have them dress up like the minions. So there's just these gags every now and then in the movie where you just see them running a generator on bicycles <laughs> where they're doing like that minion speak and then they're cleaning and fixing the house but it's really slapsticky like the one of them's holding a trampoline in case one of them falls off a ladder and then they do and they're still doing the minion speak it was that was funny that was it reminded me of like in the first one when they were doing that uh 
Robert De Niro party. Oh, yeah, yeah. Where the characters were dressed as different Robert De Niro characters. That was funny. No, the movie, uh, I mean, largely it's hit or miss, but it, it does it, it does land uh, a, a good handful of times. And when it, when it does, it's, when it does, it really works. I just remembered one of the bits that, <laughs> that was annoying to me was when um, the girls decide to get revenge because they called their parents. Mm -hmm. They're all sitting outside in bikinis out <laughs> and in the yard, mm -hmm. and Seth Rogen's trying to get out. And then they just start ripping his clothes off of him. Yeah. And I'm like, call the police. This is <laughs> assault. Assault. They're trespassing. Yeah, you can totally solve it. It mm -hmm. was funny, though, when the, the wife's trying to hose them down yeah. off the car. He's like, you're just making them hotter. No! No, you're making them sexier! <laughs> yeah, like, this one, like, I didn't... And believe me, I, I totally thought the same thing I mean, when I was, was watching that. this was stuff that. from the like, first one, too. Like, yeah. the stuff with the airbags, where it's like, that's assault. Yeah. But, I mean, it just it, depends on if it's funny, honestly. I, I guess, yeah. And in this one, it's it's a mixture of a lot of it was making me laugh a little more. And also, I just came prepared that that was just going to be th th what, the, what the movie was. So I didn't really let it get to me too much. I, um, I think there were probably, like, more gaps between laughs in this one than the other one, mm. but the laughs that I did get were harder than the first one. Yeah, honestly, yeah, quite a bit. And I'm... There were, there were things, because it, it's been a couple of years since the first one came out, and I haven't seen it since since we saw yeah. it. I, I didn't watch it again. Um, so I had to remember at first, like, because when Dave Franco's gay at the beginning of this, I had to remember, like, was he, he gay? In I was it, like, or did, did he we come just out? say that? Yeah, yeah. I was like, did he come out at the end of that movie? And they actually address this in the movie, so I'm like, they address like him coming out later, like in between the two movies, because Zac Efron mentions that it was after they graduated college. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> well, and and if you look at it like as an arc, like Zac Efron is in love with him, mm -hmm. and then he gets with another guy, and mm -hmm. he realizes he, he lost him to someone else, and also, you know, is trying to find his, his place in the world. Mm -hmm. They have bits that are basically saying that. He's like, you didn't tell me your biggest secret. You didn't yeah. tell me about this. Or when he's, like, getting ready to get married, and he's, like, talking about his fiance. Yeah. Like, but it's him mm -hmm. saying that he loves him, basically. So You're talking about you, are you? <laughs> yeah, I am, bro. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, it's, 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 it's an all right movie. Like, in, again, like, I'm hard pressed to think of the last comedy sequel that wasn't a gigantic piece of shit. <laughs> um, between Hot Tub Time Machine Two, uh, God, I don't even, I can't even remember. God damn, there are bad comedy sequels. Fuck, Zoolander Two, fuck, God, that was bad. Um, this one. Yeah, this one breaks the mold. It is not a bad comedy sequel. <laughs> it's it's better than the first one. I think both of them. I'm good with seeing them once, mm -hmm. but I thought that it was it was fun and it was more than I expected. So it was it mm -hmm. it was funnier than I thought it would be. It just <laughs> it took a little bit because the start was was uh, misleading. I think. Yeah, <laughs> we're going into sisters territory, are yeah, we? Yeah, I was so scared it was going to be sisters, but it yeah. was. I it, it never felt like it was ten thousand hours long. No, I check my phone. This movie's a solid ninety minutes, like it, which is exactly what a movie like this should be. Not like fucking sisters that was a little over two hours long. Mm -hmm. Fuck. Uh, I would I would say that. Uh, if you're a huge fan of the first one, then it would probably be worth it to you to to see it like maybe an afternoon show or something like that or sometime during the week. Uh, if you were kind of iffy on the first one, then give it a rental, uh, give it a rental or watch it on Netflix or something. But if you're if, if you really dug the first one, you'll like this one, too, and it'll be worth it for you to see in the theater. It's a good sequel. Mm hmm. Yeah. You ready to see Angry Birds? <laughs> also a good movie, right? <laughs> we will find out. <laughs> Later. <laughs>